The enormous Drax power station in North Yorkshire is unlike any other in the world. It's one of the biggest in Europe and by far the largest in the UK, typically supplying around 8% of the country's electricity. It was the last coal power plant ever to be built here and throughout its 41-year lifetime, it's burnt through huge quantities of coal, the dirtiest type of fossil fuel. But three years ago, Drax decided to start converting some of its boilers to burn wood pellets, most of them shipped in from the United States and brought to the plant by train. As a result, the Drax plant has become the largest single producer of renewable electricity in the UK. But now the company is planning to take a big step further. This is just an empty field today, but in a few months' time, we will find out whether or not it's going to be something that the UK has been trying to get off the ground for the last eight years, a carbon capture and storage plant. Carbon capture and storage systems trap carbon dioxide from power plants burning fossil fuels, such as coal and gas, and bury it deep underground before it has a chance to warm the atmosphere. The new coal plant Drax hopes to build would capture about two million tonnes of carbon dioxide every year and pipe it out to be buried deep below the North Sea. It could eventually burn wood pellets as well, but initially it would use coal. That's important because power plants contribute more to global warming than any other industry because so many of them burn coal. And scientists say that if we want to prevent harmful climate change and keep burning fossil fuels, then hundreds and perhaps thousands of carbon capture systems like this will have to be built. Um, well, our view is <clears throat> that fossil fuels provide a low-cost form of energy, and if you can handle the CO2 associated with it and store it so it doesn't affect the atmosphere, then, then, then you're ignoring a major opportunity. We think that uh, carbon capture and storage could be very low cost, and one thing the world needs is low-cost sources of, of, of energy and heat. Uh, and CCS provides an opportunity to utilise cheap and abundant fossil fuels in a benign fashion, probably as a transition technology over the next 50 years. So it'll enable us to, to actually transition to a, a fully low carbon system without fossil fuels in due course, but it reduces the cost of the pathway to get there, which we feel is fundamental. The trouble is, these systems are so expensive and new that no company wants to build them alone. So over the last 14 years, governments around the world have committed $24 billion to help get the technology off the ground. The result so far is just one commercially operating power plant with a carbon capture system, the Boundary Dam plant that opened last year in Canada. But at least 33 other projects have fallen by the wayside in the US, around Europe and in the UK. It's eight years since Gordon Brown's Labour government first announced a competition for carbon capture funding that's now worth £1 billion. Drax is in a consortium that's one of two finalists vying for that money. The other is a group led by Shell and SSE, the energy company, that hopes to build a carbon capture system on a gas power station in Scotland and pipe the CO2 out to the North Sea. A final decision is expected by early 2016, but given the troubled history of carbon capture and storage projects, no one is holding their breath. Polita Clark, Financial Times, Yorkshire.